Hello, it's Heather Anderson, and today I'm diverting from my usual content. I'm sharing something very um, near and dear to my heart. Um, I am sharing something very personal today, um, very deep. Um, we will get back to the spinning and the knitting and the crafty things, but this is something that is weighing on my heart to put out there and that is why I left the Lestadianism branch of faith. Um, this could be a very long conversation. I'm not sure if it will be or not, but I just want to dive right in. So um, I'm Heather Anderson. I'm from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, I was born I was born in Minnesota, so moved up to Michigan when I was about six years, six years old with my family. Um, and where do I want to start? I guess explaining a little bit about, for those who don't know or have zero history on this religion, um, just a little bit about it. I don't know how deep I'm going to go in. So Lestadianism was um, basically a revival movement that started in the middle 1800s in um, the northern Scandinavian regions, mainly Finland, but also Sweden. And um, a man named Lars Levi Lestadia started the movement. And I don't really know how, to, how else to explain it besides it was, it was a revival movement. It was, you know, to bring people closer to the truth, supposedly. Um, and most of the people who um, came from these regions and became less became followers of Lestadius were Sami origins, which if you know anything about the Sami, they are the natives to Finland, Norway, Sweden, the whole Scandinavia region. Anyways, um, fast forward however many years, right? And you know, I grew up in, in a section of that religion. I grew up um, called FALC. Um, some people say it stands for First Apostolic Lutheran Church. Some people say it stands for Finnish Apostolic Lutheran Church. Either way, it's a brand of Lestadianism. Um, there are some other big branches out there. There's the OALC, which are the Old Apostolic Lutherans. There's the LLC, which are the, um, I think it stands for Lestadius something, something. <laughs> Anyways, I am, I don't claim to be like an expert on the history of the religion. What I do know is what happened to me and why I left the religion. So I'm going to share that in this video. Um, please know that, um, this, you know, there's going to be some things that I say that if you grew up or are still attending this faith, you might be like, that is totally not something that I believe. I can't believe she's saying that they all believe that. And I want to make it very clear that there is no set doctrinal beliefs within this religion. And that is part of the problem because if there's no standard of truth, then it's really hard to, for the people to rebuke the pastors, for the pastors to rebuke each other. Um, you know, what? Who, who sets the standard? If Like, you won't really find any information on the FALC online. Um, the closest you can get to some sort of reading material is if you subscribe to the Greetings of Peace. And um, that's the closest you can get to, like, printed... Um, statements of their faith and even then you can read an article and someone else might read it and they're like I totally don't believe this but I believe in this faith but I don't believe what this person is saying that we're the only ones saved so there's some major um, conflicts that arise um, when there is no standard of truth and that's the main thing I want to get across in this video so um, 
I didn't take any notes. I did write down a few scriptures that I hope to touch on, but we'll just see what happens. I'm just hoping that the Holy Spirit will lead this conversation and we'll just see where it goes. So, like I said, I grew up in this, in the FALC, and I'm the oldest of 14, and it's an amazing place to grow up. You have so many built-in friends, tons of cousins, tons of siblings, so there's always fun to do, and it's pretty much wholesome fun. Like, we didn't grow up with the TV. Um, we just played. We, you know, when we got bored, we would never dare tell our mom we were bored because she would make us do jobs if we were bored. So we would invent things to play with each other, and it was a very awesome childhood. I have no qualms on my childhood and so many parts about this um, religion because a lot of it is wholesome and there is some truth but also there is deception and that's what I'm going to get into in a little in a little bit. So anyways I love my childhood. I love my family. I still love my family. Um, all my friends I am a very social person. I always could find friends. I could always find fun. I, you know, life was a blast and there was always a party to be found. And if there wasn't, then I would just have a party. Like, simple as that, right? It was pretty awesome. Um, however, you know, I did feel close to God during certain points in my childhood. I can specifically remember times where I just, I can't explain it. it. It wasn't having to do with being at church. It was more like I was outside and I was just seeing creation and I was just like, wow. Like, imagine the creator of the universe and how he made this place so beautiful and that he made me and that he cares for me. Like, I knew, I knew the truth that Jesus died for me because I was taught that. I knew the truth that I could be set free from my sins because I had been taught that. Um, and I believed in him and I, I truly did. And it was really good, right? That childlike faith, that, that simple belief that Jesus came once and for all, he paid the price and we can be set free from our sins. And it's amazing, right? So, you know, as I'm growing older, um, you know, I get into confirmation class and which is another really big party. <laughs> lots of friends, lots of fun. Um, and the preacher asks, you know, does anyone have any questions? And I asked, could you explain, like, I had heard about the splits that had happened and I knew some of them were a pretty big deal. And um, from my understanding, we were the ones saved and they were going to hell because there's only one kingdom of God and we were it. So therefore they couldn't be it. Um, you know, I, my mom was raised in Minnesota. So that was a big portion of a big split there that happened in the seventies. And I just, I just asked the preacher, like, what can you explain about that? And he didn't really have an answer besides that there can only be one kingdom of God, one kingdom. And because we're the kingdom, there can be no other no other Christians or people who call themselves Christians or believers, they can't be saved because they're not one of us. I thought, well, I mean, yeah, kind of makes sense, right? If they say there's only one kingdom and I feel pretty happy here and I feel loved and I, you know, I believe what my parents are telling me that we're the only ones saved and that all we have to do to be saved is to believe that seems pretty legit right so again there's some truth mixed in with some deception so um you know there was some things that i couldn't quite put my finger on like um in the FALC and I think in like pretty much every other branch of Lestadianism they preach a blessing which is simply they say to each other believe all your sins forgiven in Jesus name and precious blood and even though the other branches of Lestadianism use that same blessing it they each only believe that it it works <laughs> if you are in their denomination their specific branch of Lestadianism okay so 
I did find this out at one point and thought it was very odd because I had two really good friends and these these were in, when I was in about fourth grade um, and we talked about what we believed in our faith and one of these friends was an old apostolic and one of these friends was from the LLC and the interesting thing is they all we all three of us believed the same thing on how to get saved was to believe your sins forgiven in Jesus name and precious blood and we all believed that it was through somebody within our specific denomination that had to say that to us and we all believed each other was going to hell <laughs> okay so it's just crazy looking back on it how God like obviously was planting these questions in my mind and like making me take note of these things um, of course I was taught that if you question anything that the church teaches it's the devil and he's trying to pull you out of the church and you you can't talk to any worldly people worldly people being anybody who doesn't come to your church okay so any even someone who professes the name of Jesus who says you know I believe in the blood of Jesus that he saved me that he died for me um, that his blood covers my sinfulness if if they're attending a different faith According to what I was taught at that time, they were not saved, okay? So it's a very confusing and conflicting way to hear the gospel, okay? Because there's a lot of truth mixed in with deception. And I want to get into that a little more. So moving forward, I got confirmed. I was always the life of the party. I always had tons of fun. I A year after... Um, high school I found the love of my life we got married it was amazing um, we moved back up to the UP after living away for just a year and we decided to build a house we decided to build this is just gonna help you with like my frame of thinking at that time so we decided to build a house and we built our house kind of away not not even away but just a little ways away from most of the people live um, 20 minutes 20 minutes away from where majority of the people live because up here they're they're congregated in a pretty small area and um i just remember having so much fear that you know what we are moving out of the school district where most of the um falc people up here attend and um like what why are we doing this like i've i had always been pretty good at fitting in even though i always felt like a little misunderstood or like I always felt like like because I could be the life of the party I felt like um, I don't know how to explain it like I could I had a depth to me that I couldn't reveal I guess in my family or with my friends you know and um, Anyways, I don't know where I was going with that, but I think a lot of people feel that, that, you know, you want to fit in. There's one part of you that really wants to fit in because that makes your life really easy, but there's this other side of you that just feels the bondage of needing to look and be a certain way just to feel like you're a part of a community. Um, it's, I don't know, it's an interesting psychological thing. Anyways. So we move out to this place and, and now looking back, I can see how God's hand was on it all the time. But the first thing I told my husband when we moved is like, I really hope some people from the church buy like, buy up the properties all around us so we don't have to be affected by any worldly people. <laughs> that was literally where I was at, you guys. It's crazy to think about, but that's why I can have so much compassion for people now because when people pass you over, God's peace, God's peace, and then they pass you up, God's peace. I understand because I did that. You know, he who is without sin cast the first stone. I was the worst offender. I was the worst offender. Um, I held, a, even though if you had asked me, you know, do I think more highly of myself because I attend this faith, I would have told you no I don't I knew I was a sinner and I needed Jesus but when you have this like 
belief that you're the only one saved and everyone out there is the world, you can't help but to see them in a certain light and to think that, well, for one thing you think, wow, I'm so lucky I was raised where I was raised because I mean, just shake the dice and I could have ended up in hell. Shake the dice and be born in a different family and I, could, I would be doomed to hell. That doesn't make sense. I am so thankful that God does not, <laughs> that's not how he works, okay? I am so thankful um, that you're not born into Christianity. You must be born again. You must be created in a new image with a new body, a new heart, a new mind. It's amazing, you guys. So anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I still very much lived in fear and I still very much, you know, even though I had some questions, as I said, growing up, and, you know, I had these moments of feeling really close with God, and, and you know, I had this blessing that was spoken over me, and that I would speak to others that I loved, and, you know, I really, it's, it's a hard thing to explain about the blessing, because I really thought that was the only kind of forgiveness that was possible. I didn't think that like anybody outside the church could possibly forgive each other even like or people from two different religions could forgive each other I, I I questioned how people could stay married outside of the church I was raised in if they didn't have forgiveness if you don't have forgiveness you're not gonna stay married and I I was like that must be why they're all getting divorced you know like they don't have true forgiveness and I I thought I had that you know some sort of um, monopoly on forgiveness and the Holy Spirit and all of that um, it's a very interesting way to grow up it and in some ways very good and in some ways very dangerous um, but you know life would continue to happen for my husband and I and um, we had three beautiful little boys like, like we were living the American dream we had built a big beautiful house in the country um, with a lot of debt, but that's what most people did, so we did it too. And, um, you know, life was good. There was nothing really to complain about. Like, I had everything I could possibly need. Why would I go searching for God when I was so comfortable with my life? You know what I mean? So I wasn't really. Um, even though I had those kind of questions in the back of my mind, I just... I put them aside and just thought, well, I'm happy. I'm loved here. I'm accepted. Um, yeah, you're taken care of. Your your physical needs are taken care of. If you have a baby, there'll be tons of ladies showing up with meals for you. If you have some kind of um, physical disaster, people will come help you. Help, they'll, they'll help you financially. They'll take your kids off your hands. They'll, you know, if your house burns or you have some kind of natural disaster, they'll be there rebuilding for you. It's, you know, it's amazing. You feel totally supported in that way. But as the years that go on as a mom and a wife and getting a little bit older and, you know, I wasn't that old. I was in my mid-20s at the latest. And our, our first daughter was born. It should have been a very happy time. But the problem was is that she only lived for three hours. It was devastating. It totally rocked our world. It changed everything for me. Um, also around that same time, I was realizing that I was, I felt so stuck and I didn't know why. I felt so stagnant. I felt like I wasn't allowed to grow. I didn't even know what that means. I wanted to grow. I didn't know, you know, I, I felt like I wasn't supposed to grow. Like that was somehow coming from the devil that I wanted to grow, you know, um, when really God makes it so that <laughs> we naturally want to grow. We want to learn. We want to, to continue, um, becoming more truthful and knowing what the truth is and what the difference is between lies and truth anyways so when my daughter when our daughter died it would be it, it just shook me up so much I felt the love of God like never before I felt his presence I felt his peace I knew that he was bigger than what I was raised in. I knew he could not exist within one denomination. I, I just knew he was, he was real. 
um, I had a savior who loved me. I knew that he died for me. I knew that my daughter was alive and well with him. Like it was amazing. But still there was this feeling like something is not right with our lives. Um, the way that God like helped me with my grief was truly awesome. Like he allowed me to have so much joy and of course there was sadness, but he allowed me to, to truly like see the big picture of heaven and hell and this, the destruction on this earth and why we don't want to stay here. Um, and why we don't want to go to a worse place than here. Um, he just, he felt so much more real to me and I didn't, you know, I didn't know what to do with that because on one hand, I'm in this church that, you know, I love the people. There's many things I love about it. I'm also feeling very stuck there. I felt very, like, I couldn't totally be myself. I, you know, it was, nobody really talks, like, about God or Jesus. It's wrong to ask questions about, about him. Um, you know, and if you talk to anyone outside the church, they're going to pull you out is kind of what you're taught. And if you seek the Lord, that's a bad thing because, you know, you're seeking something besides what they're offering you. But you know what, I think when you go through a painful event in your life, sometimes the Lord can use that to show you that, you know, if he can help you survive this pain, he'll help you survive another one. And um, if you truly want him to help you, I guess, that's really the difference. If you don't want anything to do with him and you're gonna do it all on your own, in your own pride and in everything that you already know, then he's gonna also allow you to do that. You know but it would still be a long journey of me um, finding really what the truth was and and my husband and I and our family we slowly did pull away from the church and we didn't really know why at the time it's just kind of weird how that happened we just you know something was off and we didn't know what I wanted growth I wanted healing um, I still didn't really know where to find that like we weren't taught to read the Bible to find the answers we were taught to just go to another believer and have your sins forgiven and you're supposed to feel better, right? So I didn't even really think about picking up the Bible. I basically kind of went more into like self-help and then slowly like the self-help would it evolve into the new age. And it was not good for my family and I. So even though we were out of the church, we were still on a dark path, you might say. And um, just getting very confused like in my mind i still believe in god and jesus i still believe that he died for me i still believe that i was rescued from my sins but then i'm being told all this other garbage um about you know relating to self-help new age like you know you can you can heal yourself by doing x y and z and anyways i tried kind of all of it and um you know some people have like this immediate like like born again experience but for me it would be very gradual how the Lord would work in my life and I think what you know eventually I just realized you know what I need to um like I need to simplify my life I need to unplug from all this stuff that I'm doing because I don't even know what I'm doing like with the new age and stuff I have no clue if this is like damaging me or not which it was um but I basically like kind of just pulled the plug on it all overnight and I don't know why it was almost like God was just shutting those doors for me and I'm like I don't know I was like having fun and kind of enjoying it like it fed my flesh because it, it's all about yourself and how to make yourself feel better how to be happy and free and like that all sounds really appealing and really great I wanted to be that and I would have temporary moments of feeling that but you know, the pathway to hell is very wide and a lot of people walking in that path are very happy. And I feel like that was the direction I was going in because I was seeking this happiness and I was seeking this, this life of joy and peace and, you know, to be healed and everything from my problems. And really I was just using all that garbage to neglect God <laughs> like I was putting all that above him and what he says in his word and so slowly I you know because 
when my husband and I left, I didn't know anybody who had left. I mean, I knew of people who had left the church. I didn't know anyone personally who I could have a conversation with. I didn't know why people left the church besides myself. I only basically knew why I did. I knew how people were treated once they left because I was exposed to that while I was still there. So, but for whatever reason, God really, by and large, removed that fear. I mean, I still had fear of like what my family thought of me and it's, it's still painful to think that my parents grieve over me um, because they think I'm going to hell and they have no idea how confident I am in my Lord and Savior and that he's coming back and it's gonna be amazing I can't wait to go see him and my daughter and it's awesome but you know it's hard because you're there are people that you love so deeply and you want them to know that you're okay you're safe you're free but they think you've been sucked into they think you've been sucked out of your faith by the devil. Um, and you really can't, you really cannot convince them otherwise. I truly convinced like only God and the Holy Spirit can do that for them. Um, anyways, I have so much I could say. So it would be a very gradual over time that I would um, mainly just get into the word and see like, wow, like, Jesus says, forgiven once and for all. It's not keep going back, keep getting a blessing. He has so many promises, and I want to, I wrote down a few scriptures um, that just really blew my mind when I read them. Um, in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. What? It's amazing, right? Um, Another one that really impacted me so much, um, 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. What? I didn't need a blessing to be saved. I had always been taught I needed a blessing. And not just from anyone, but someone within that denomination. There is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, that's me, and that is Christ Jesus. I can go to Jesus for my forgiveness. It was amazing, you guys, as I just, when I'm reading these verses, um, another thing, you know, in John 3, um, Jesus is trying to explain to Nicodemus how to be saved, and Nicodemus is confused, like his, his heart and conscience are being pricked, but he's confused, how do you, how do you, you know how do you be, how do you believe like how do you become a believer um and jesus just tells him like you have to be born of the spirit you can't just be born of the flesh which is your you know born of water which is like your natural birth when you're born to this earth but you have to also be born of the spirit you have to be born again you're not born into christianity you have to be allow jesus into your life you have to trust him you have to repent to him um and and I was taught that the church could control who had the Holy Spirit and who did not. That you received the Holy Spirit when you received a blessing. So therefore, nobody else is saved, okay? Again, this is what I believed. I know there are some people who say, we don't believe that. They don't teach that here. Um, I do still occasionally read Greetings of Peace and they still teach that in the Greetings of Peace. So. If your conscience is being pricked that that's not okay that they're teaching that and you're still attending there, you need to talk to the leaders. You need to talk to the leaders for your because of your love for them because they will be judged for everything they taught the people. And it says in the Bible, I'm not sure exactly where, you can look it up, that the leaders will be judged more harshly than those who sat in the pews and just believed everything that was spoken over them. So for the love that you have for them, <laughs> tell them, tell them about the truth and the gospel. But anyways, getting emotional. <laughs> um, and Jesus goes on to say, you don't know because, you know, I can tell you, I can tell you the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. 
There is nobody who can claim to control the Holy Spirit. And at what point is it um, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to claim that you can control it? That you can tell people they don't have the Holy Spirit because they don't come to your church. I think that is so sad. I think that is terrifying. It's also scary because when you're sitting in the bench and you haven't received Jesus, you haven't trusted him as your Lord and Savior, you're being told over and over and over again that just, you know, raise your hand and receive this blessing and you're saved you're going to heaven the blessing is in the bible yes the blood of jesus is in the bible it's all we need is the blood of jesus it says that we cannot add or take away from the book of life from the bible we can't take away and if we do our name is blotted out from the book of life you guys this is so serious i want you guys to understand this because He's coming back. <laughs> this world is not getting better. I mean, we might have temporary moments of joy. We might have, you know, fun in our families. But just look at all of the decay around you. Look how fast things are going with, with how the schools are going, with how healthcare is going, with how our government is becoming more and more corrupt. Look at how they're pushing no standards when it comes to moralities. They're pushing on young kids about homosexuality they're telling them it's okay you can choose you can do it and be whatever you want to be you know your truth is your truth my truth is my truth there is no standard that is a lie from the devil there is one standard of truth <laughs> and it's found in the Bible <laughs> and you guys if people are creating fear in you over reading the Bible you need to know that is not from God God does not create fear about seeking him I I had fear of opening the Bible the first time I thought I would never be able to understand I thought only the ministers could possibly understand what it says in there and I was supposed to sit there and and you know soak in their higher level of understanding it's not what God says in his word, you guys. He doesn't say that. He doesn't. He, he gives it to us for our confidence so that we can test to see if we are putting our faith where he wants us to, which is on his son. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have so much to say. I didn't realize I was going to go into this. Um, oh, yeah, I wrote down this verse. Second time... 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. I was so afraid that if I read the Bible that I would leave the church because that's what I had been told. Like other people, they started reading the Bible or another one is oh they read a different version besides the king james and now they're leaving the faith no they just read what it says in god's word and they realized they weren't living the truth in their heart um it's so sad another thing that that i will hear a lot and i don't know why why it's so spoken about in this um, Lestadius faith is that if you leave the church you are either angry bitter or self-righteous or probably all of the above okay I love these people I love them this is why I'm doing this video I love them they are beautiful people they are afraid of man over God they see man they see what their forefathers have been taught and they want to trust that more than God's word God's word needs to be up here what your forefathers teach needs to line up and if it doesn't it has to go or you could very well put yourself on the path of destruction oh, it's so crazy but there is hope 2 Corinthians 5 6 5 17 therefore if anyone if anyone who is in Christ he is a new creation the old has gone the new is here 
there there is hope jesus says he has come to take away the sins of the world for anyone who would trust in him across the entire world it's not just in this little box of religion it's anyone who put their faith in him it's amazing um romans 3 23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god i am not bitter at anyone i understand the pain and the fear and the I understand the grief that people face because they think I'm going to hell. I, I feel, yes, I feel bad for that, but I feel excited for Jesus. I, I can't wait for him to come back. I have no fear or anxiety about him. And I want, I want you to fear the Lord's judgment more than man's judgment because man is going to is going to decay and the Lord is going to last forever. Oh, I could say so much about that, but um, what else? I'm getting so emotional. <laughs> Revelations 3.20 Behold, this is Jesus talking, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens that door, I will come to him and will sup with him and him with me. It says nothing about your religion. It says nothing about what you were born into or not born into. I'm so glad God doesn't shake a dice and decide that because you're born into a certain faith that you are going to heaven or hell. That's not how our God works. He is so much better than that. John 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. It's not about being self-righteous. Um, leaving the church has nothing to do with thinking you can do anything in your own power. I could never have left and came to the came to the Lord in my own power. There's n there's nothing in me that wanted to give up my pride or my flesh. I mean, it was great loving myself. <laughs> I had fun. <laughs> Obviously, it's it's empty. It's hollow, right? There's there's something else, and I believe the Holy Spirit is what calls us to the truth and wants us to come to Him, to intimate relationship with the Lord. Um, did you know that you can have confidence in whether you are saved or not? You don't have to guess or think, shoot, I hope on the judgment day that the Lord won't say, turn away from me, I never knew you. You can have confidence that right now, whether you will be saved or not, if the Lord returns, right as you're watching this, you can know, 1 John 5.10, whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony concerning his son. When I read this, I was so burdened for everybody who says that reading the Bible is dangerous and believing what God says is, believing what God says in his word is a lie. If you don't believe what God says, you're making him out to be a liar. That is so serious. That is... Oh, that is so serious. And this is the testimony. On the other hand, this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son does not have life. You can know without a shadow of a doubt. Yes, you can be saved and still doubt. You don't have to doubt. We have God's promises and we can believe his promises over our own emotions, over current events, over maybe what our family is saying or what the news is saying. We can trust God's word. It's, it's true. It's, it's something worth standing on. Um, another thing that you know, burdens me so much and, and makes me just feel so bad for people who are stuck in any religious setting who are being told that if you go and seek the truth, that you are gonna, like, that the devil is pulling you away and he's bringing you to hell, okay? 
What does the Lord say about seeking? <sighs> the humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. Psalm 69, 32. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. 1 Chronicles 16, 11. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Psalm 105, 3 through 4. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. 1 Chronicles 16.10 Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. Psalm 40.16 But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, The Lord is great. <laughs> this is a good one. The Lord is near to all who call on him. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. Psalm 145, 18 through 20. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe God's word are you going to believe his son are you going to believe the sacrifice he made for you or are you going to put yourself in bondage are you going to put yourself in chains and say no i'm going to accept that i have to feel this certain way that i have to go along with the status quo i have to believe things that aren't in the bible in order to be saved your children are relying on you to pursue the truth your your families, your communities. Um, only God can change your heart, but you can you can pray pray to Him directly to Him and and ask Him to give you a heart that truly loves Him, and He will answer every prayer that is that lines up with His promises, especially. And I just pray that you will that somehow that the Holy Spirit is working through this video and, and speaking to you and that you won't stop here, that you will be encouraged to pick up the Bible, to understand that God is so much higher than man and we don't need to put anything above him, not even religion, traditions, our family, forefathers, our upbringing, um, any other idols such as I was going into, the New Age, self-help, all that stuff only he is the highest and and you can and you can walk in that and have confidence where you're going I just um, getting back into a little bit of my story it, it would take a while my husband and I came to the truth in different timelines and it wasn't always easy on our marriage um, but we had situations happen that we knew was God and we knew that God was speaking to us and he was um, really asking me especially as a wife am I going to trust him with my husband am I going to trust that he's got my best interest in mind at all times that the Lord will never leave me nor forsake me um, I did I I surrendered it all to him and I said I can't fix my marriage I can't fix my home I can't fix my children and but God, you can, and and it, it slowly, no, you know, no life is perfect on this earth, but slowly God would restore. He is a God of restoration, and he does answer his promises. Um, but as a wife, it is really important that you do not um, go to a controlling place with your husband, that you just love him and respect him unconditionally um, that you allow him to lead you and be the head of the household no matter what that looks like it can be hard to um, to do that as as women but it really it really is important and, and then God can move in in his heart and and you can see what can happen and that the family unit can truly be what what God intended it to be which it's amazing but 
Anyways, this went kind of long, but I think I got my message across. I know I left out many parts of the story, but I think that's the gist of it. I hope this helps someone. You know, if you're part of any Lestadius branch and would like to reach out, please feel free to, um, or really any religion I have found, you know, since leaving, I have researched other religions a bit, Jehovah Witness, Mormonism, Amish, and they're very similar, even Catholics, very similar in the things that they, the ways they control the people. And so, you know, that has given me confidence to see like, the enemy really isn't that creative. You know, he really isn't that creative and God is so much bigger than him. So I take heart in that and I take heart that I'm standing in the truth firmly on the foundation of my father and you know all of the filthiness you know that I have done in my life and the sins that I have committed in the or even will commit in the future they are all gone washed away it's amazing and now as a believer in Jesus you I have his Holy Spirit to help me with temptation to help me have power over sin to help me turn away from it to um to show me what in my life needs to be changed to sanctify me and to to strengthen me and to give me courage to um help me walk in truth to help me make decisions that are um god's will and i don't have to figure this out anymore on my own it is such a good feeling it's such a relief to know i don't have to rely on my emotions which as you can see can be kind of all over the place i can rely on him and his promises and so can you so i hope this helps someone out there and i hope you're blessed by this i hope you have a beautiful day and i love you all take care Bye bye